Okay, friends, Yossi here. Today we're going to talk about my secrets of picking great investments. How to pick great real estate investments in Toronto, specifically condos and townhomes, but I want to talk about all kinds of real estate, how to pick a great investment. And the way I'm going to do it is by reviewing um, about 20 properties that are on the market right now. These are going to be resale properties and some assignments. I'm not going to be reviewing uh, pre-construction in, uh, in this video. I'm going to show you how I pick great investments and what do I look for to find that perfect investment. Okay? So the reason I'm doing this video is simply because a lot of people call me and say, Yossi, we see your videos, we really like them, da 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 and uh, we'd like you to pick a great investment for us, which makes me really, really happy because my focus is investing. And investing, you know, when I started, I was thinking investing means I'm not going to live there. I'm just going to buy it, flip it, or rent it. No, I was wrong. And investing, and I, my clients, of course, teach me everything. Investing means you can live in there. It's still an investment. It's all an investment. Any property that you buy is an investment. Right? Makes sense. So everything that I show you on any of my websites or Twitter or anything like that, you know, it's things that I like. I'm not going to show you stuff that I don't like. You know, I don't like negativity. I don't like poking people, send negative comments. I just don't do it. I focus on one thing and one thing only, which is real estate investment. If it's not investment class, I'm still not going to post it. If I see a post that I think it's not that great, I'm not going to comment on it. You know, life's short. There's a lot of stuff to do. Life is beautiful. Let's enjoy it. Make some money. Have some great time. Okay, so Yossi Kaplan, UrbanRealtyToronto.com, my main website. Yorkville, LuxuryRealEstate.com, my website for one plus million dollar properties. I really like this top Five Toronto Penthouses for Sale, one of the best articles I think I posted. And it's got some live links. You can go back to it, and it will send you back to the listings to see what's available right now. Um, if you look at my Twitter, not logged in on this browser. By the way, I'm using the um, Firefox browser and the DuckDuckGo uh, search engine. So it'll give you a little bit of privacy. You know, they still steal everything that you do. Do my best, okay? You should do it too. Um, on the twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan, the reason I keep showing it is because all the little things that I can just like, boom, from my phone or want to let you know or post a new video, everything goes here. This is kind of like takes all the channels, all the various uh, websites and uh, MLS sites and assignment sites. And whatever I got going, I, I post it to Twitter. So Twitter kind of combines everything. You can quickly uh, scroll to this and get links. <coughs> To whatever you like okay so let's invest I'm going to scroll here now Let me check that everything is cool yeah to close this window okay um, so I'm gonna scroll here and we're gonna start with uh, urbanrealtytoronto.com when you go to this site and you scroll to either the side or the bottom you get the shortcut links and these links will give you immediate uh, jump to the current listing. So these listings are active on the system. And I already clicked a bunch of them and kind of went through them so we can have uh, a quick and interesting video instead of looking at them live. I want to make it faster, okay? So this is a search. Uh, first you search for Toronto, then we put 608 Richmond, and I get 11 or more uh, listings. Remember, some of these listings, if they have sold like, um, say, this past weekend, today is Monday, if the agent, the listing agent, myself or someone else has not updated him yet, it's going to take maybe a few hours or a day to show. So the best thing to do is say, Yossi, fill the form, let, for example, this unit here that um, I think I'm going to go see uh, shortly because it looks really nice to me. Um, one way to do it is just fill the form next to the listing and then ask me to give you information about the listing. Now, I got a bit of a slow internet here today. Why is that? I'm not sure. Here we go. I got the bean field, like 100 uh, giga schmigas here. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we are at 608 Richmond, um, the Harlow. Now, not every unit at this building or any building are the best. That's not the secret. The secret is there's just a few really good ones. And within this few really good ones, there are a few like just fantastic, absolutely phenomenal. Those are the units I want you to look for, okay? Those are the units I look for, and that's what we're looking for as investors, okay? Uh, don't know about the piece of art, but it doesn't matter. I look at the unit here. 
9099, kind of a bit of a tongue-in-cheek, 9 floor unit, M5 V09, lots of 9s here, that's kind of cute. Uh, 878 square feet, plus a balcony, 9 foot ceilings, bedroom plus den, lots of 9s. Quick look, do I like this unit? So first thing I noticed, because I know I, you know, I live here, um, it's facing north. Is that a problem? Maybe, maybe not. Some people do not like north, but Toronto North is not true north. It's actually slanted to, uh, I think it's slanted to the west a little bit. Toronto North is not a uh, true magnetic north. So you're going to get some sun coming in the afternoon on the long uh, days like now. It's almost June. The building is phenomenal. I actually really, really like it. Feels You walk in, it feels really good. You can see what it looks like. So what I look for, I look for a useful and usable floor plan. That's the first thing. Like It makes sense. I can live here. I can enjoy my time here. I can reside here. I've got a bit of a view. Um, may not be built. you got to look at these buildings like and see if your view is going to be blocked or not. Uh, Toronto North View is not bad because you get a bit of the city and a bit of green. And uh, in nighttime, it's really actually one of the best. Okay, So that's the hollow. That's the lobby just to the right of the lobby as you walk in it's got a gym and that's about it okay so it's a, there's a boardroom it's not even a party room it's kind of a lounge boardroom so okay that's pretty good that will keep your uh, condo fees low and that's a nice unit and they're asking 909 for 878 square feet so just over a thousand a foot which is pretty good um, you can look here and see if you see if there a parking in this unit parking yes there is a parking Okay, so parking in this area probably goes for sixty to eighty thousand dollars these days, give or take. I don't think you can get anything for fifty, and a hundred is a little much. So that's your range. So a uh, thousand plus buck a foot with parking, not a bad, not bad. We'll go on my list, and I'm gonna actually go and see it. I look at the floor plan if it's posted. Not in this case. I'm gonna go into the unit and check it and see if the space makes sense to me. Okay, that's secret number one. It's got to make sense. It's got to work for me. I'm going to live there. I'm going to do my thing. I want to make sure it's working. The second thing I'm going to look is the numbers. Do the numbers make sense? So I'm going to look at this number here. Now, it doesn't mean I'm going to buy the unit for 9099, maybe more, maybe less. But I'm going to put a little bit of uh, information in front of me. And now look, what's going to be with 20%, say $180,000, $200,000? Now I need to care about $700,000. Uh, for this price, give or take, how much of a rent do I need to carry $700,000? So am I making cash here, am I breaking even, or if I'm losing every month, okay? Now, if I think this unit is underpriced and have a lot of room to grow because it's a unique unit and there's a lot of things that can happen here, and maybe I think this unit can have a lot of potential for whatever reason, then, you know, I'm going to look at the price in various ways. So how I assess the price, many, many factors come in. Nonetheless, uh, I also want to see my carrying costs. And one way to reduce your carrying costs is, of course, to put more money down. Uh, the maximum money down you can put is 100%. So I offer you, say, 900 for the unit, and I'm going to put uh, $900,000 cash, means no mortgage. So I got no mortgage, I got no cost of mortgage, don't have to deal with the mortgage agent, none of that. I'm just going to transfer the money from my bank account to, to the lawyer, to the lawyer. But basically, I'm buying the unit for cash, okay? And then all my costs that I have are the municipal taxes and the condo fees that I pay as a landlord. Or if I live there, okay, and the tenant usually pays for the hydro, for the gas, there's gas here, and maybe water if there is a water bill. So you can get the inf information here or ask me. I, I can easily give it to you. Okay, and then monthly uh, condo fees are five, eight, nine, thirty-one. Uh, I don't know if I see the taxes here, but I guess about three hundred a month. Okay, so uh, it's about a dollar a foot, give or take, slightly under. But I like to talk about a dollar a foot, so I'm looking at about nine hundred a month in fixed costs, costs that I cannot change, even if I put more money. The rest is going to be the mortgage if I have any mortgage. Okay, so. 900,000, 900 square feet, 900 a month. This is, this is kind of an interesting uh, unit to start with. Um, okay, so 900 a month. Let's say I can get 3,000 for this unit a month, maybe more, maybe 3,500, maybe four. If I find you know, if the unit's really good, and I go, okay, now I, I'm clearing two to $3,000 a month, so twenty-four dollars to $36,000 
a year based on full cash value. Now, if I'm not doing full cash value, then I'm looking at how much it costs me per month for the mortgage. Maybe I do interest-only mortgage. Maybe I do uh, uh, your typical regular mortgage, standard mortgage. Maybe I do 2080. Maybe I do 5050. So lots and lots of options, and I can start working those numbers, working those parameters to bring back the amount that I want every month to gain or lose. Okay? Why would I want to lose? Because maybe I need a loss. Maybe I need to register a loss against another investment. So I go to my accountant. Now I'm not an accountant, so I cannot give you any tax advice. But go to your CA, CPA, or whoever you use for tax advice and ask them, give me some scenarios. What can I do if I made $3,000 a month on this unit or $2,000 or $1,000 or zero or, or I'm actually financing out of my own pocket a little bit every month? Okay, and they're going to give you the answer. But this unit to me is very nice consideration because it's good size, it's efficient size, 900, 878, I just rounded to 900, um, 9,000. Nine, Floor, one bed, one bath, looks like nice to me, could be very good potential. Okay, so that's what I'm looking at. I look at value, and remember, value is not something that you can calculate, it's something that you have to feel, it's something you have to know. Okay, so I can't really teach you what value is or even define it. It's just, you know, 20 years of investing and selling and buying real estate and falling in my ass and doing really well and you need all these various experiences to come up with the value okay um, I open a whole bunch of them but we're already here this is by the way um, you can see here when you click on the King West it's gonna give you this um, what is it called uh, not rectangle the one uh, par parallelograms I think let me know in the comments but this um, already is a pre-made search that I made on uh, Urban Realty. You click on the King West, you get to this page here. Just a shortcut for me, for everyone else. Um, here's a unit that caught my eye. This is 38 Niagara. It's in all the buildings, the Zen Condos, I believe it was called, on a 10th floor. It's a large unit, 1466 plus 350 and two large balconies. 350 is uh, referring to the terrace. Okay, so that looks pretty cool. Um, 10 story on the 10th floor and you can see nice view of the CN Tower and the turns the terrace the terrace to me terrace <laughs> the terrace to me is a big big winner because there's so few terraces in Toronto if you can find a nice terrace they're just such a, such a such a hit such a hit okay um, the unit obviously a little dated you can see the floorboards uh, this was built by the same developer, I believe, that built Spire and Mozo. And this is one of the first condos in town. It's got high ceilings, obviously, so it looks really nice. Um, I love that uh, light feature in the bedroom. That's a newer one, very popular these days. So they've, they've done it or staged it really, really well. Um, do you like these floors? Do you like the kitchen? Do you like the bath? They are definitely showing uh, their age, but they may be just totally fine for you, or you may want to do a bit of renovation and take it from there if you do want to do a renovation or if you need HST rebate or a lawyer let me know and I have a roster of fantastic people I've been working with for many years that I'll be happy to recommend you can go call them check them out and if they work for you that's great so this is another consideration right here because the space and because of the outdoor space now you can see in this picture it is not the top unit but it is a very large terrace which I really really like okay and that's Toronto I mean if you want to have you know you can pay three or four million or six million down there at 500 Wellington and get like the top unit with the massive uh, terrace that's six million but for 1.69 or whatever it was uh, that's a very good option in my opinion okay nice views lots of sun very nice to make friends with the guys above. This is just how it is. You know, it's busy. We're downtown here. Okay? So that's one. So the value, the perceived value to me here is high. Now, I'm going to have to go to look through the numbers and crunch some numbers and look at, do these numbers make sense to me? Obviously, when I'm spending $1.7 whatever it's going to sell for, you know, assuming, assuming the pricing was right, just over 1000 a foot, uh, large units with terrace usually will get more than the average. Small unit, no balcony or terrace, low floor, no light, dark will get less. So, you know, the average just 
It's just kind of a, a measuring yard, a stick, a, like a rule of thumb, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but very nice overall. Uh, haven't been in this unit, but may want to change the kitchen, okay? If I'm spending $1.7 million, maybe I throw another 200 and make it the way I want it to be. Not a bad deal if I'm going to live there, or maybe I decide I'm going to keep this unit for 20 years, okay? Uh, moving on, there's another unit I recently saw listed, and that's at the Thompson, 55 Stewart, 9th floor, 629, uh, 641 square feet. Okay, so that was one of the most popular uh, units at the Thompson when it originally sold. That was kind of their typical one-bedroom note. Today's one-bedroom is 450 square feet, so Thompson already uh, have some age, so the units are still large. Once again, you can see a bit, you know, how the fridge is stuck in there, cabinets, you know. I'm not a, the biggest fan of the appliances. I'm absolutely sure they work and that they're like, you know, it's a, it's a $700 fridge. The floors, you can change it, but is the space good? I think it is. Is the price good? I think it is. Uh, is the this like a wide unit, which is really rare. Now, it also facing north to Wellington, so I believe from the window, you're probably going to see the new Thompson, uh, or one of these. There's 55 right here. That's the entry. Yeah, so you're looking at uh, 38 here, and that's probably 20 Stewart next door, okay? But nonetheless, you got some nice view, you got some light, it's very urban, and it looks really, really nice to me. So it's for 641 square feet, 629, less than a thousand a foot. Less than a thousand a foot. That's a really, really good crash pad. Don't forget the Thompson. I like the first Thompson more because it's more cozy and homey. Uh, the new Thompson is great, but it's kind of hardcore, all black, you know, it's got the Lavelle upstairs. So if you like that stuff, go for it because it's got high value because of Lavelle, because of the second Thompson. This one, to me, is a bit more homey, a bit more livable. And it's really the same developer, same street. They even got the same street address, 5538. I see a lot of value here. There is a, there's a tour you can take if you click at the bottom here. Okay, uh, moving on. This is also 629 King Street West. This is a picture from King Street. And it's also on the ninth floor, unit 917. Uh, so you can take a look at this unit, okay? Now, this is facing uh, north, I believe. Another one of these lights. They're very popular these days, okay? The pictures could be a little crispier. This must be 650 King in front of you there. Uh, but looks like a nice unit to me. I can't really tell from these pictures directly about the unit, but it looks very, very clean and in good shape. So that's good enough for me to consider the unit uh, as a possibility. And here I got some, some open view, some open sky. That's Kingly at the back, by the way. The right side, the south side is the commercial where Indigo chapters and uh, Shopify are. And the north side right here, that's the Kingly condos, which I have some assignments if you're interested. They go for about eleven to thirteen hundred a foot. You get the comparison. They all face north. There's no south, obviously. There's some east and there's some west. Okay? So that is uh, the, another ninth floor. Now this is a larger unit, two bed, three bath, three baths, 1,200 square feet, maybe uh, as they say over 13. Okay, so that's what it is for this unit. And it really, at 1 point almost 4 million, it could be very good because I think that that range of 1.1 1 1 to 1 1.5 million is about to get boosted to the 1.5 to 2. Now it may not happen overnight, um, but it will eventually happen because the market has to move forward because our economy is based on inflation, on devaluation of your own money. You know, this year you made $100,000 from your employer. Next year you're going to make one hundred and two or three because they give you these giant uh, bonuses. I know I've, I've been an employee before, never again. And um, But the price of the real estate and the, price of, uh, and the cost of inflation will always rise faster than what you can save or accumulate. That's why people invest in real estate, because you can have a tenant and pay for your unit. Okay? So you put, initially, the deal goes like this. You put the initial deposit, and then you cover all the expenses to purchase the unit, the initial deposit. And if you're smart, you're going to do what I said at the very beginning, which is um, work with your deposit to the point where you need the, your mortgage to be. Maybe no mortgage, 
just pay fixed costs, condo fees and taxes, or maybe mortgage, 80%, 70, 50, 30% to 0%, okay? And that's how you can control your expenses, your monthly expenses, what's called the carrying costs. Carrying costs, how much it costs me to carry the unit every month. So the basis of the carrying costs are the mortgage, condo fees, and taxes. But if I got no mortgage, I only pay condo fees and taxes, about a buck a foot. Uh, what are the condo fees here? 10.54, and the tax is 56, uh, divide by 12, plus 10.54. You're gonna, you're gonna add up at about a buck a foot, okay? Uh, moving on, this is the Adelaide Building of Fashion House, 461 Adelaide, unit 440 on the fourth floor, asking 559, let's have a quick tour here. Welcome home, fourth floor, it's got a nice piece of art. This is Fashion House, I'm a big fan of Fashion House. This unit looks like it has gas stove, which is kind of cool. It's got a nice island. It's a nice unit. Uh, I think it may be facing west into the old building where Century Room is. Was. Okay. Or we may, f or we may face east here. I, I can't really tell. Uh, and that's, that's the uh, gym on the top floor opening to the pool. That's the party room, party room, no pictures of the pool. Okay, so this is what this unit is. I'm gonna have to walk into this unit to tell you, this unit, it's kind of hard for me to say from the pictures. Uh, I don't have an exact size, five to five, nine, nine. Okay, it, it'll be a consideration. I can look at the condo fees, 379, that's quite cheap. Property taxes, 18, that's about 150, plus 380, 530. Okay, so not bad. And the price here is about a thousand a foot. Okay, so not bad, not bad, not bad. It is a consideration. Um, in this case, I'm just gonna walk in and take a, take take a look because this could be a good investor investor or first time uh, bar unit if I can not get the same unit in the same building with better view for less. Okay, I'm gonna say this again. Um, one of the secrets is the views. You know, especially buyers coming from Asia, they, they need the views. They like the towers with a high floor on the subway line. Um, me, coming from a European background, growing in the Middle East, it's, it's really everything mixed. We just look at everything and try to look at, and this is a cultural thing, and try to look at what are the advantage he, advantages here and the disadvantages here, okay? So if I can find the unit that works for me, the interior is very, very important because most of the units in Toronto are terrible uh, design. Uh, the last 10, 20 years, developers made a lot of money developing, but maybe not created the best units with what they have. So we got to walk in them or at least look at the floor plan and then look at where they face. And I, I've been to most buildings, most units by now, and then I'll be able to tell you. But if I can, I'll say, you know what? I want to walk into this unit, check it out. Okay. Um, this is a really cool one. So now we go going on King, closer to Bathurst, 438 King, unit 1313. 673 square feet terrace. Uh, doesn't say how large the unit is, but it's about 1,000 to 12. They didn't say, but there, there is a large terrace. So let's take a quick look. Um, facing south, I know this because I know King Street. So this is fantastic. Lots of room. Those tiles could be uh, worked a bit. See a lot of those tiles, guys. Come on. All right. Uh, nice unit on the inside. Uh, slightly of an older building, so you can see the style, but I think it's totally fine for what it is. Also, most of, most of these units that um, were built in in that uh, in that era, you know, if you picked an expensive unit, you would have gotten all the upgrades that were done at that time. So this will be upgraded at time of buying. Uh, it looks like it's got high ceilings, okay? Um, it looks really nice. Um, if I can see a floor plan, that's great. If I cannot, I want to walk in there. But when I go and I look at a unit at a 1 to 1.5 million, okay, I want all my checklist tighter. Okay, so I want the outdoor space, which I definitely have this. Um, I think I have 10-foot ceilings here, uh, which is definitely, to me personally, it's a huge advantage that immediately I would pay 10 to 15% more for the terrace and the high uh uh, high ceilings than any other than, than your standard average unit in the same building in the area. Okay, so the price per foot 
is not high here, okay? It is not high. Another thing you can do, you can go to condos.ca. Let's just try it live, see if it works. Condos.ca, oh, .ca, okay? And I'm gonna plug in 438K. And I get nothing. All right. Uh, Condos.ca has been like up and down a little bit. I see that the averages are okay. But these, this number, 952 uh, a foot, that was 722 a while recently. So they got some issue. And I've, I've said that before. I even tweeted them. That they got some issues with the numbers. Maybe condo.ca is going through some uh, period of difficulty. So don't worry about it. I'll go back here. But if it worked, or if I go into the other MLS and basically start calculating uh, averages, I can give you the average for a unit like this in that building and then in the area. And that's a very good measuring stick to find how they compare to each other. Okay. Uh, we've seen this one. I'm going to close this. Okay, this is another uh, pre-made search I have uh, I've drawn here. And it's more of the downtown. So I got from York to Spadina. And what I'll do, and you should do this with me if you can, is go to the sort and then look at the latest listing. Okay, the latest listing, which I was on, the map redraws. Okay, and then you can see what's available. And one that caught my eye right away, because it just came on the market, is uh, 224 King, built by Brad Lamb. Brad's been doing like some great work recently. Obviously, you know, it's four to five years to design a building before it even happens. Um, but I've been in this building, and the quality of finishes here, and the design is fantastic. I really like it. Um, so, quick view on this building, what you get here. Okay, it's got heavy drapes, because it's, it's a very busy area. Uh, but this is a very nice building, Theater Park, Theater Park, 224 King. You can even see a little bit of the, the, the bathroom uh, hardware. Very nice, kind of hard edges. Kind of a lofty look to it. Bit of a balcony. I'm not crazy about the pictures here, whoever uh, took them, you know. Looks like came out of the cell phone. Uh, these pictures have not been updated since the, since the snow. But this is uh, Roy Thompson Hall, so I'm looking east at this point. Yeah, okay, so I can't really tell about this unit. This picture is not very helpful, uh, so I'm not going to put this on my list. Um, but I may, I may pop in and visit. I got 922 square feet and 151 of balcony. Okay, the location is phenomenal. Uh, this building is averaging about 1,200 a foot right now. So this is a bit of a discount uh, over what it's averaging. So I would like to pop in and see what's going on there. Um, is the discount because... Of something or maybe just how they priced it or maybe they're trying to get multiple offers you know whatever it is another trick that I like to do is I go sort and I go to the highest priced units to see what's available so obviously these been on the market for a while you know like if you want to see what makes and they show twice because they posted into the Treb and into the, uh, the IDX um, but what you can see here this is a prime example of outdoor space, penthouse, 40 something floor, 290 Adelaide. If you're an executive on Bay Street, you need to live here. If you own a company, is traded on the, on the stock market, you need to live here. Okay, that's where you host the other CEOs. That's, how, that's where you close the deals. That's where you bring, I don't know, De Niro to stay over for the night, whatever it is. That's what you want to have. Okay, so that's very nice. Now, the six billion, you know, the Uber say over three million or so. Um, these are different kind of investments. These are when you park your money, we need safe investment. I'm not necessarily looking for what am I breaking EV on here because that's not the point. People that buy units, you know, three million and up, they pay cash. There's no mortgage on the unit like this. There's no point. You either buy cash or you don't. Okay, that's what you do. That's your view. There's OCAD right there. So that's pretty cool. So. It is an investment, but it's a whole other category of investment because what I look for here is I look for store of value. Store of value means how can I get, and this is all from business school, uh, store of value means what can I, how can I save, safely save, safely, safely save my money. That's what I want to know here, okay? So that's an option if you have 6.2 million. 
another window I had open here, this is 11 Charlotte. So that's a, uh, another Brad building. Came up with a lot of those today, but that's to scour the listing and see what came up. Unit 24 7. I might have been in this unit. I mean, I've been to so many already, and they all look a little bit the same after a while. Um, and the pictures here are not the highest res. <coughs> Listing agents are not doing great work right now about this. But look at this spectacular three bedroom southeast corner suite currently lease for $4,800 a month to September 2019. Really willing to re sign lease. Just under a thousand square feet of living space with floor to ceiling windows for breathtaking city skyline views and a 260 square feet balcony with gas hookup for barbecue. Okay, the capitalization I done by the system, like we have no control over it, so just how it is. Okay, so you're looking at they're asking 1.2 million, uh, currently getting 4,800 a month. I'm not sure if they're gonna re we gotta ask if they're gonna renew or not. Uh, just down there, so 900 some square feet, 1,000 square feet, 2407. Uh, of tw uh, I don't think it's the penthouse, but it looks pretty good. Condo is just under 800, property tax just under four a year, divided by 12. Okay, so that's what you get here. Definitely, if I wanted to park 1.2 million, I'm gonna look here, okay? If I park 1.2 million and I get 5,000 a month back, I'm getting 60,000, so that's about 5%, okay? 5% cash on cash. Now, mind you, if I only put, uh, say, six or 800 or a million, my ROI will be higher, higher. And that's why, because interest is low, relatively low, let's say, you know, I'm a big shot, I'm gonna get interest at two or 3% right now. Everyone's paying four, but I'm a big shot, so I can get cheaper interest. I'm a mortgage broker, I know these things. And if you wanna like transfer your money to cheap loan, ask me, I'll show you how it's done, not a problem. I'll share this information with you. And I may be able to get, you know, cash and cash if I bought it completely for cash, 5%. But as I start, and that's also business school, as I start taking a loan against a property and putting less cash, my ROI rises. And there's kind of a, of a, of a graph that you see where your ROI is the highest. So if return is important to you, there's one strategy to financing a unit, and this could work at 500,000 or 5 million, it doesn't matter. And if you just want just cash, because you want to park your cash and then take some take some money out like a savings account, then that's another option, and that's you'd be surprised how many people do this. Okay, they're sitting on the cash, they don't know how to invest it, they don't trust the banks. They said, "I'll just buy this unit cash." You know, all I have to do is cost you about twelve hundred a month to uh, own it, right? And you get back the money. You get back the money. So that's that's kind of a retirement fund, a living fund, or maybe you take that cash and pay for some another investment with it, okay? That's how you do it. These are all pre-tabs I opened already. Uh, 87 Peter, good location, my friends. There used to be a lot of clubs we used to go there. 42nd floor, 549. Uh, this is a small unit. Here's a floor plan. It's a, it's, a, it's a small unit, but actually it's a wide, wide unit with a nice balcony, and it's all glass. So. I like these units because I think the 550 range is a very, very good first-time buyer and investor. And it's got the L-shaped kitchen I like so much. They didn't do the stupid mistake that you see the kitchen is flat on the wall and then you sit in front of the kitchen. I don't like these units unless they're wide enough. They don't work. In this case, this is a very, very good design. The bathroom is all the way in the back. It's actually really, really good. Oh, and there's another picture here that's north. So that's a east facing unit my friend this is a good one i'm gonna take this and post it on my twitter okay this is a good one absolutely i like it 549 don't know the size doesn't say uh condo fees will give us a hint 278 this could be a very small unit okay this could be like a 400 square feet unit so now if it is a 400 square feet the dollar per foot is very very high and that's maybe why it's still on the market, although I don't know how long it's been on the market. So I would look at what, what I would do is I would look at how much is 87 Peter selling for, how much are this, then the smaller the unit, the higher PSF, don't forget that, the larger the unit, usually the lower PSF with the exception of penthouses and terraces. 
So 42nd floor facing east, not bad. Probably get some nice VOC and tower. Couple photos here. This is kind of cool. Can't see much here. That terrible photo, guys. Don't no. No. Give me give me a nice wide view of the of the unit. By the way, I just bought this camera here. It's a Fuji XT100. It's got a beautiful wide angle lens. And that's my new camera to use for indoor. Um, the Fuji film is a classic, it's got like a classic look. It's got a flash, and uh, this one I'm gonna use, and it's like a 24 megapixel camera. Wow. So that's I'm gonna start using this and take a lot better picture than what you see here, okay? This is just ridiculous. Okay, but nonetheless, uh, a good option. Need to check a bit more, but definitely on the list to check further. Uh, also, I should say that the small units relatively usually tend to make a highest ROI if you buy the right price. Okay. Uh, ADA Blue Jay with Bisha. Bisha is a whole other level, okay? It's its, its own creature. It's its own thing. It was uh, it was made by uh, uh, developers and club people, and, and the design is like you. This is the only one in Toronto, and I really like it. It is a true lifestyle building, okay? Uh, this building also, just to show you the design, commands high prices. And it's a newer building. You can see in the design, it's all built in. It's a beautiful kitchen. Pretty good. I mean, the quality is very, very nice here. Um, the ceilings look high, too. It looks very nice to me. Some nice light here. Not crazy about old man furniture, but, you know, everyone got their taste. It's okay. It goes, it goes with the unit. Um... It's good, all white, slight touches, very nice. Okay, bit of view, a bit of nice view. Um, what are we looking at here? I think we're looking at maybe the well. Maybe. I think we're looking uh, west and slightly south here. Okay, if I'm right, I think I'm right. That's very, very nice. Yeah, because that's Spadina. That's right. So that's the well with all the cranes. So that is a prime, prime, prime uh, view here. Very nice. Now, I don't know if the agent came and put the camera this way. Uh, 22A, 22nd floor, 1.1 million, 900 some square feet. Doesn't tell me. Parking and large locker are together, can be located. Okay, so over a thousand a foot, but that's what lifestyle buildings get. So, also on my list, okay. Uh, okay, this is Young and Eglinton. Now, this is interesting. This is 415. It's a studio. Okay, it's a little studio. But sometimes studios make the best money. Why? Because if you pick this place for 415 or 400, whatever it is, it can jump to 500 very quickly. And that's from 4 to 5, that's 25% gain, right? But... Your twenty percent is only eighty or whatever eighty three thousand dollars. So that's doubling or more your investment. So that's how I look at the numbers. And again, like terrible pictures, but everything sells. I think once the market comes down a bit, probably you'll you'll see better pictures. But for now, that's what it is. Um, just like new large one hundred three square feet balcony, soaring new paint wall. Okay, that's got a soaring new paint wall plus ceiling. Modern kitchen. It actually, it looks pretty cool. Okay, so depending, again, I'm going to check the PSF per square foot, dollar short. We just say PSF, which means dollar per square foot. I'm going to check the view on this one. I'm going to check that the design is comfortable enough to live. And then if all of that, then I'm going to look at the numbers and see that do the numbers make sense to me. Now, sometimes these small bachelors are amazing. Okay, so I don't discount anything. Not a bachelor, not the largest unit, not the medium unit. I look at each and every unit. I look at how does it compare price-wise, how does it compare um, finishes, how do I compare the interior layout, very, very important, maybe one on my list, um, and of course, dollar per foot and what's around it, and then I kind of know. When you walk into the unit, you're gonna know if you like it or not, so the only thing that left is to see if the numbers make sense. Okay, gotta go, let's finish. Um, this search here, C8E1, okay, let's skip that. Okay, this is interesting. This is 17 Dundonald. 
So this is basically Young and Wellesley, okay? Just by Young and Wellesley, direct access to Wellesley Station, 701 square feet of living space with massive, massive nine uh, foot, okay? So that's massive these days. Ah, uh, you got you got to laugh a little bit. Uh, fourth floor, seventeen nine knowledge in the four seven lots of seven zero six seven nine seven one square feet. So the price is under a thousand a foot. Not sure if it's finished assignment. This is an assignment. Okay, so I like the assignment game because it, it's much easier sometimes, not always, but sometimes to offer less than the asking price for assignment. There's more. Um, leeway you can bend sometimes the seller more to get lower price so you know uh, nothing to visit but a floor plan uh, would be helpful which they did not include in the pictures but it may be attached so I would look at it okay everything I opened here I would look at I didn't open stuff that I don't like I don't it's not for me I uh, ate the Esplanade so that's the L tower on the 50th floor 2 plus 2 very nice corner unit, about 1100 pure luxury living. You gotta love that language, huh? I don't know if you noticed, but my listings are pretty like straight up. Like this is what it is, guys. Like come in and take take it, take a look. It's got the slanted windows. You kind of feel like you're in a, on a plane or something. So high up there. Um, I've been in this building. It's very nice. It's a busy, busy building, um, but I like it. It's kind of cool, nice little. It's super busy location. But if you need to go, if you need to be by the go. Or maybe you work in town like four nights a week and then the other three are home, wherever it is, probably like an hour or two hours away and want to skip the commute. That's a really good option. Okay, so here you walk in. Uh, nicely designed. There is a little uh, Watermark 360 home photography. I don't know them, but I've seen pictures from this uh, personal company and they're doing great work. So 360 home photography, you're doing great, whoever you are. I like your stuff, okay? Um, the floors look great. Mm -hmm. The kitchen looks great. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, guys. I'm going to turn this off. Mm -hmm. There's always something beeping. That means I got to go. Uh, that looks pretty cool. Even, even the, the column is on an angle. So I like it. I'm just going to show you the rest. Very good. Very, very nice. Okay, so not bad. I would, I would use, I would like, this is kind of a southeast view. Okay, so very nice. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so pretty cool. That's a two bed, two bath, about 1,100 square feet, about a thousand bucket foot on the high floor. Uh, one parking spot owned. Okay, good value, guys. Good value. Don't know if it's got a locker. It doesn't say, but lockers are, you know, you can acquire that later from a neighbor or something. It's not such a big deal, really. Um, a definite consideration. A definite consideration because a thousand bucket foot. Super high floor. Now this is this is a this is this is a building that sold for a lot of money when it started. This is Citizen. They sell high. This is a um, uh, Marilyn Monroe uh, Mississauga developer. Okay, they they command high prices. So to me, this is a deal. So when Yossi looks at this apartment, he goes, "Man, that should be on the list because the a thousand a foot at the L Tower, um, right by the subway and the Go Train." Very, very busy, but that's maybe what I'm looking for, or that's my target audience as an executive. They want to pay me $5,000 a month. That's the unit, my friends, okay? So that's another unit that you can make $5,000 a month um, on 1.1 on 1 .1 investment, okay? Uh, what else? I wanted to look at the condo fees here. 789 so that's good. Property taxes, 5 Okay, not bad. So you know again a thousand maybe eleven hundred a month for this and the rest three to four thousand in your pocket the average western world kind of main city real estate generates three to four percent a year okay when when you when you own it that's the average toronto has seen like crazy crazy returns mostly on flipping but if you're just there for the long term it's three to four percent cash on cash means everything bought for cash and then you just take all your expenses, which is really, if it's rented, it's the condo fees and the taxes. Tenant pays for water, gas, whatever, hydro. Um, so that's what it is. So if I can get 5 or 6%, no, no, it's really good. You know, GIC gives you 1%. So I'm making three to 600% more than GIC. Yeah. <laughs>
All right, bank. We we get we, we want we I like to beat the banks, okay? Uh this is cool. A blast on the past 333 Adelaide Street East Unit 531. I know the exact unit. Uh, we used to manage a unit um, on the same floor. So these were also built by the Spire guys and the other I just showed you. I think this building has lasted the proof of time. Uh, this is a King of Sherborne. I really like this building. Most of the units here are larger than what used to be. You know, the smallest one bedroom here was about 600 square feet. We may need an update. Uh, this is probably original stuff still. But, you know, if you're just buying to rent and just park your money, it could just work. Okay, it could just work. So here's a quick view. It's got, it's, it does have saunas. Don't see these no more. The gym's kind of gray, but it's a gym. Uh, the entrance is very nice. There's good. There's very good concierge service in this building. There's also a, uh, a King Street address, if I remember correctly. Takes you to the fourth floor. And this is 714 a foot. 714. I'm not sure why it's only 714. I'll have to call, but this is pretty good. This The Mosel Condos is good, and uh, it's been on the market for a while. I'm not sure why, but maybe there's a deal here. Maybe there's something to be made, okay? Because to me, that's a good uh, renter unit. Maybe people don't want to pay 648000 uh for a larger unit. Who knows? Um, but it's not that difficult to find out what's going on in there and then see if maybe it makes sense. Uh, it is possible that somebody comes with a certain mindset, and most people in the world, they have the same mindset. But maybe you come in and say, this exactly fits my need, so it could be good. Uh, nonetheless, very good building. Uh, got some okay amenities. It's well maintained. It's got very, very good security and management. I've been in and out of this building hundreds of times. Okay, so Mozo is good. Mozo. Uh, that's another general search I got here. Uh, this is worth a look. This is 183 Dover Court. That's the old uh, Argyle loft, I believe. Argyle loft, Oasis, Queen West, all this poetry. A um, thousand buck a foot, parking, yes, I'm coming. Roller blinds and one parking space. Okay, so nice, nice. That's pretty cool. That is very, very cool. Okay, it's got a second floor. I like it. I really love the old loft, and they're so hard to find. And it's got, look at this uh, little terrace here. I think it's very, very cute. I also like the design out. A design like this is unusual, it's very busy and it's super colorful. Someone with a, a great knack for art is here. Some people are not going to like this because they like just a very flat kind of Brad Lamb style, you know, the modern style. Um, it's not a good or bad, it's just a matter of style and design. And an older loft may fit more this style, but sometimes you see take loft and convert to like a harder modern style. So, but you can change that, it's no big deal. Uh, nonetheless, really, really nice unit. I really like this. Look at this uh, outdoor space. Okay, CLR, those tiles, guys. Okay. Um, I don't know about those tiles here, but, you know, you can chase them. No big deal. If you need renovations, HST, rebate, all that stuff, recommendation for anything, just, just ask me. Okay, that's cool. I like this one. The, the last picture of the Argyle itself. I'll just show you so it kind of give you, um, if you remember this building, it's right here. There's a little park here and there's Queen West right here. You're right by the Drake. Very, very nice. Uh, and this is comes at 925. 925. Very, very nice with parking. Okay. Um, there is a penthouse at the Thompson, 2.75. Now, this is not your usual typical investor buy, but I will review it for you because as I said, um, <clears throat> Thompson is a unique property. I really like the first Thompson. We we started this video with 55, so that's another unit. Um, it's got fantastic views. It's got a cute little uh, bar restaurant at the top. It's got a good gym. It's got a yoga deck outdoors. Uh, <coughs> design wise, it's all you know. Design's going so fast. It's showing a bit of its age, but it's totally okay if you like it. You can rip the floors and the baths and put something new in. And it's a good, it's, look at this, this is fantastic. And it's a good place to park your money. The reason they're asking close to $3 million because it's just one of the only units that 
have this kind of stuff, okay? Like, it's really, really rare. Like, it's really, really rare. So that's what you're paying for here. You're paying for the size, and you're paying for the space, and you're paying for the outdoor space, okay? And the kitchen is cool. I like it. It's very nice. Nice island. It's all good, okay? Now, yes, you do have neighbors, but, you know, if you need the old, completely open views, you got to go right there by the water, look at the water. It's kind of dark and lonely at night to look at the water, I find, but everyone has their own taste. It's, all, it's okay. But if you need to park $3 million, this could be a really good option. Okay, that's my last page here. Uh, this is a general search just to show you, like, if you need to park $8 million, you can do it here. Okay, just to give you an idea. Now, this is some sort of uh, Yorkville Palace. Look at this. This is this is a whole, like, opulency in, in a whole other level. I wonder if it comes with all these little statues and stuff. But that's what it is. You know, there's something for everyone. If you're looking to park $8 million, fully knowing you may not sell overnight because this is Toronto and not New York, that's an option. If you like this design, that's an option. If you have hundreds of million dollars, you know, and you need to pick one of these because you just need to park some money, that's an option because it's going to retain the value because, you know, you're just not going to sell it for less. It's just a long, long-term investment. And this painting alone could be half a million dollars. Who knows, right? So that's what it is. So that's it, my friends. Here's my uh, YouTube channel. I would really appreciate if you subscribe or like or not like my video. That also helps a lot. The video I posted uh, a couple of days ago was sold in one day, and that's the story of uh, what happened at DNA3. Uh, we're still conditional on uh, status. It's on MLS. You can check it. Uh, before that last week, I did a video up and down because you can see some type of properties. The ones I show usually go up, but some go down. Why is it? How to find them? And then this was a pre-listing video for DNA3. And there's another pre-listing video. This listing will come up uh, maybe this week, hopefully this week. They finish all the, jo the jobs, all the renos, and it's going to be just amazing. Absolutely phenomenal, fantastic, okay? Uh, Twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan. Please follow YossiKaplan.com. I put a lot of stuff here. It loads as we go. Okay, Urban Realty, York Real Estate. That's it.